Hi folks, I bet that you missed this pretty face. In this video we will transform this into this. Yep, a full painting and weathering video for the Kubel wagon. Basic stuff, nothing fancy, beginners friendly and hopefully easy to follow. Let's go to work. Before we proceed to painting, we must mount our pieces on painting handles. We will use toothpicks for small parts and cocktail sticks for bigger parts. I will use a 0.5 drill bit on a rotary tool. Medium CA will be used to secure the pieces. We will use this homemade stand. Some companies are actually selling those, but do I have to say something? So, let's mount some small parts. You should choose a spot that will not be visible at the end. Mark it with a scalpel and then make a hole. Cut off a piece of toothpick to make a tight fit. Then take a small amount of glue and the job is done. For bigger pieces we will not do holes. Just make a blob of glue, put the stick in it and freeze it with the accelerator. As you can see our stand is working good. If you want the paint to adhere properly, you should wash your model. Some people like to use water and soap. I prefer to use isopropanol. Just brush gently the parts with soft brushes. Priming the model is always a good idea. I will use a 25 euro Fengda airbrush with a 0.5 mm nozzle. I used Valeo Panzer Grey Primer. For thinning the primer I will use a homebrew thinner. It's a mixture of water, isopropanol, glycerin and flowate. After a good shake of the bottle we can mix up our primer. Roughly a two part color one part thinner ratio. I mix it with a soft brush in the airbrush cup. You should always test the performance of the color. It looks ok to me. I was operating at one bar. We should build up the color gradually, always moving and turning the piece. Be sure that you cover all the surface. Some places can be hard to paint, but especially those places should be covered with dark primer. Later the color will have a hard time to enter those places too but they will look like a shadow because of the dark primer. The primer was let to dry overnight. It looks good to me. I will go for a monocolor paint scheme with Dunkelgelb. It is an acrylic color from Amo, but you can thin it with Mr. Leveling Thinner. Again, I mix the color in the airbrush. First put in some thinner, then the color. And in the end, the other thinner. Mix properly with a soft brush. The ratio was roughly 1 to 1. The pressure 1 bar. With acrylics it is very important that your first hand is a super light mist. That way you prepare the surface for other hands. Then you put away the piece to dry and you proceed with other pieces. During the second hand you can proceed more, let's say, aggressively. Here I am with the third hand and you can see that the color is building up nicely. For the last fourth hand I added some white into the color and I only spray it from above. I decided not to use any varnishes in this project to keep it simple. Let's check our base coat. It looks good but the surface is a little bit rough in some spots. I will use micro set and sol for the decals. And you are probably familiar with the other gear. I am not good with decals and I will only show you the application of a simple one. I cut it out the registration plate. Put it in cold water for a few minutes. In the meantime I brushed some micro set on the spot. When you see that the decal is moving freely you can gently transfer it on the spot. 
If there is enough water on the spot, you can move it in place. If there is not, you can put a drop of water on with, with a brush. When you are happy with the position, gently squeeze the remaining water out with a cotton swab. For the light color chips, I will use the base color and some white. The ratio was one part base and two part white. I used Amo acrylic thinner here. A piece of packaging foam on tweezers will be our first tool. The towel and the black paper are here to unload excess paint from the sponge. As you can see, I'm not strong in this technique. I think that the main problem is the foam. And me too. If you know a good foam, please let me know in the comments. I am more confident with a brush. The goal here is to simulate damaged paint on the more exposed areas. I will not go into details because there are some great tutorials out there. I will show you a let's say simplified version. Now the dark chips. This is a German vehicle, so we will use a mix of German grey and German black brown. It was a joke, any mix of dark grey and dark brown will do the job. I mixed them into 1 to 1 ratio and leave the paint more on the thick side. Using a triple zero brush I painted the chips into the biggest like chips, but not in all of them. Those are the most exposed parts and where the metal is the most damaged. I love this part because the chips come to life. I painted the wood in the cabin floor with Vallejo old wood. Nicely, slowly, with a triple zero brush. You should be precise, but no need for exaggerating. The floor will be mostly hidden. For the seats, I started with Vallejo Black Brown as a base coat. Then, to simulate some wear, I have done some chipping with Vallejo Deep Yellow using a brush. You can also use the sponge technique. And for best results, you should start with the sponge and then proceed with the brush. I tried to make some shadows using black, but it didn't turn out well. I should only put a black wash in the crevice where the two parts of the seat meet. For finish I applied two hands of very thin base color as a glaze. Here are the finished seats. They are not the best, but they will be filled with stuff anyway. So they will do the job. The base color for the tires will be a mix of Vallejo dark grey and white, in a 2 to 1 ratio. You should avoid using black, because it don't look natural. I applied the color with the brush. Here you can see the result. I think that this is a nice base color to simulate rubber. Pin wash time. I didn't want to complicate things and I opted for Amo dark brown enamel wash. It is designed for this base color. It is too thick from the bottle, so we will thin it down with Amo odorless thinner. Put the wash in one well, skip one well and put the thinner in the third. In the middle spot we will mix our wash and you can constantly adjust the ratio depending on your needs. Apply the wash around details. As you can see the rough surface and the lack of varnishing don't help the wash to flow as freely. But I wanted that and later you will see why. Let the wash dry for a few minutes, but be careful. The drying time must be shorter as it would be on a varnished surface. Now we proceed to blend the wash. Clean the brush in thinner and dry it on the paper towel. 
just remove it gently from the parts where you don't like it and try to make smooth transitions. Let's check the result. Well, because of the rough surface and no varnishing, the wash is harder to control, but in my opinion, I managed to do filtering, pin washing, streaking and dirt deposits in one step. Not bad at all. Now I can put the seats in using some medium CA glue. Apply a small amount of glue from the masking tape tray. And put the seat in using a cotton sweat. I wanted to make some mud. I mixed some homemade acrylic paste from PVA, sorted sand and acrylic colors. I didn't know what exactly I'm doing, so I didn't film the process. But I'm happy with it and I will show you the details in the future. I put it on the lower parts and into the mud guards. I also treated the wheels with it, but very gently. Then I treated the mud with the same tinted wash as I used for the vehicle, to give it some depth. For the lighter color of the mud, I used Amo light matte effect. I just lightly applied it straight from the bottle to the upper parts of the mud. And then gently blended it with a brush. I used the same process on the wheels. Applied it in the crevices and blend it lightly. Well, it turned out great and I'm very happy with the result. I will use it more in the future, for sure. I dry brushed some black color on the wheels where they are in contact with the ground. And the wheels are finished. Let's try a sort of very simplified night shift technique on the exhausts. First, I painted the exhaust with Valeo London Grey. Then, I added some variation with different shades of grey. At the end, some chips using pure white were added and the exits were painted black. Now let's switch to enamels. I covered the surface with Amos Tricking Rust effects. You can use it straight from the bottle. Apply it all over and then move it around until you are happy with the results. As always, Uncle Night Shift rules. Look at those exhausts and I used only half of the things that he was doing. Whoa! I was keeping the roof for the end because I was afraid of doing it. We will start with Vallejo World War II Russian uniform as a base coat. The base color was applied using a brush. I skipped the leather belts and I painted those in Vallejo leather belt. I used Vallejo Sunny Skin Tone and the base color for the first highlight. I made the color very thin. I gradually painted the highlights on the pronounced parts of the roof. Then I added more Sunny Skin Tone to the mix to make it even lighter. I applied the second highlight only on the most pronounced parts. And those are the results. I'm quite happy. I made a black wash and I put it into the deepest crevices where the roof meets the leather belt. Our roof is finished and so is the whole vehicle. It was a long journey and I'm glad it's over. It is my first model in a year or so and I'm happy with the results. If you like the content, I will kindly ask you to subscribe to this channel. If you have any questions or thoughts, put them down in the comments. You can also follow me on Facebook, Diorama Devil, where I post almost daily updates. Thank you for watching and stay tuned!